Hello friends, the National Library of Ayurveda Medicine is pleased to present a new episode on Ayurveda. The present release is part of a video lecture series prepared for the education of Ayurveda literature in accordance with the academic curriculum of Ayurveda studies in India. My name is Dr. Sumit Kesarkar and I will be your host throughout this video on the introduction to Dhatus which are the building blocks of the human body according to Ayurveda. Dhatu is derived from the root word Da, which means foundation or that which bears. It is thus said to be the basis of growth and survival. In terms of the human body, Dhatu is described as the functional entities or tissues which nourish the body and support it. Modern medicine describes the body as a network of interconnected systems. They each affect one another. The nervous system affects the skeletal system, which affects the circulatory system and so on. The way in which the physiology of the human body is perceived in Ayurveda is completely different from that of modern medicine. Rather than having specific differentiated systems, the body consists of series of channels called strotas, which are seven in number. We will discuss the strotas more in detail in a separate video. These strotas or channels flow through every part of the body to perform the necessary functions. The seven strotas contain the seven dhatus which are progressive in qualities, with each higher unit carrying a part of its previous one. According to Ayurveda, there are seven basic dhatus in the human body. They are Rasa, Rakta, Mausa, Medha, Asti, Majja and Shukra Artha. Some dhatus produce accessory tissues or upadhatus. Upadhatus in brief can be considered as a refinement produced when dhatu metabolism occurs. The upadhatus nourish the body. For example, stanya or breast milk is one of the two upadhatus produced by rasa dhatu during the metabolism of rasa. Though its essence is present in a woman throughout her life, it nourishes the baby post-pregnancy when it is born. Raja or menstrual fluid is the second upadhatu produced by rasa which through its formation balances the body and promotes fertility in a woman. Similarly, dhatus also produce waste products known as malas. The malas have a healthy state and a diseased state in terms of their physical attributes and are useful for diagnosing the functioning of the dhatus. The proper functioning of all the seven units culminates into an eight unit known as ojas, which is considered as the ultimate refinement, the supreme nectar that sustains life. Each dhatu has certain proportions of the pancha mahabhutas in them. To review the general translations of the five mahabhutas, Agni is fire, Prithvi is earth, Akash is space, Apaha is water, and Vayu is air from the perspective of planet earth. We will have a look at the proportions of those elements in the different dhatus now. The plus sign indicates the dominance of a mahabhuta. Rasa dhatu has predominance of Apaha, Rakta of Apaha and Agni, Mausa of Prithvi and Apaha, Medha of Apaha and Prithvi, Asti of Prithvi and Akash, Majja of Apaha and Prithvi, and Shukra of Apaha and Prithvi. Apart from this, every Dhatu or tissue layer also has the predominance of one of the three doshas, which can be quantified from the combination of the Panchamahabhutas. The seven dhatus can be correlated to the modern terms as rasa dhatu can be correlated to the lymphatics, capillary secretions and digestive juices, rakta dhatu to hemipatic or circulatory system, mausa dhatu to muscular system, medha to lipids or fat tissue, asti to skeletal system, majja to nervous system including bone marrow, brain, spinal cord and nerve apparatus, and Shukra Artham to reproductive system including hormones. We will study each individual dhatu further in a separate video. Each dhatu is a micro representation of the macro human form. Each dhatu sustains itself by absorbing food from the digestive juices. The absorbed food is assimilated to nourish itself and its upadhatu. The unwanted material is excreted as the waste mala. To take an example, the ahar rasa or digestive juice on reaching the rasa dhatu is absorbed by it. The digestive fire within the rasa dhatu assimilates the ahar rasa as per its own attributes 
and nourishes rasadhatu and its upadhatus stanya and raja the waste product is excreted out which in the case of rasadhatu is phlegm or mucus and can be attributed to kapha the three processes of absorption assimilation and excretion when functioning together harmoniously impart health any discrepancies leads to diseases dhatu's growth sustainability and destruction are governed by the three doshas as explained before dhatu portion refers to the nutrition of the different dhatus in the body through digestive food three different laws exist in ayurveda that explain the process of nutrition of the dhatus from the digested food we will study each in brief sheer dadi nyaya sheer means milk and dadi means yogurt this most accepted law states that as milk is transformed into yogurt similarly one dhatu transforms into another just as yogurt cannot be converted back to milk this dhatu transformation is unidirectional this is known as sheer dadi nyaya at first ahar rasa completely changes to rasa dhatu following this is the changing of rasa dhatu to rakta dhatu and so on This is one of the paths of nutrition of the different dhatus. For example, mausa dhatu would constitute a part of rasa and rakta. Each unit is processed from the previous one and hence considered to be a final refinement. The sun's rays take many years to reach earth, yet it maintains its effect through the continuous release of rays. Likewise, it may seem by this law that one dhatu would completely end if it totally changes into other one. but due to the continuous flow of ingested food it does not occur kedar kulya nay the word kedar means small pieces of land and kulya means drain crops in a field get irrigated by creating kulya or drains and kedar or small pieces of land the small pieces of land get irrigated one by one through drains in sequence In the same way different dhatus of the body get nutrition one by one in sequence through vessels the first dhatu rasa dhatu gets nutrition from ahar rasa or digested food then rakta dhatu gets nutrition from the rest of the ahar rasa and likewise up to shukra dhatu this ayurvedic law of nutrition of the dhatus unfolds as follows during the transformation first ahar rasa reaches the rasa vasrutas or channel The rasa dhatu agni or metabolic fire of rasa dhatu processes the ahar rasa. During this process, it is divided into three parts: sthul or macroscopic, sukshma or microscopic, and mala or excretions. The sthul part gives nutrition to the dhatu that is rasa. The sukshma part nourishes its descendant dhatu that is rakta and its upadhatus stanya and raja. mala is excreted out that is kapha in this case in form of phlegm or mucus this way the transformation of dhatu upadhatu and mala takes place the theory in brief says that one dhatu serves as an activating signal for the formation of the next in modern medicine this is comparable to the effect of hormones as signals khala kapot nyaya the word khala means pot and kapota means pigeon the bird as the bird has to come to the pot of drain for its nourishment likewise all the dhatus are directly nourished by ahar rasa without considering the sequence of nutrition for example if a certain area is lacking sodium the sodium in the circulatory fluid will go directly to it to have a brief recap we understood through this video the constitution and functioning of the dhatus which are considered to be the foundation of the human body There are seven dhatus: rasa, rakta, mausa, meda, asti, majja, and shukra, and they are responsible for the structure and functioning of the human body. The healthy pathology of all dhatus culminates into a supreme refinement dhatu called ojas. Each dhatu is composed of the pancha mahabhutas with varying combinations. Some dhatus have upadhatus, which can be termed as a refinement of that dhatu that is produced during its metabolism. Each dhatu absorbs food, processes it to nourish itself and its upadhatu, and excretes the waste in a similar manner as a human body does. The nature and attributes of these waste products and upadhatus are helpful in determining the health of a dhatu.
We also learned about the three laws of metabolism between the dhatus and how they are nourished. The Sheer Dadi law gives the example of milk and yogurt and implies that as milk gets transformed to yogurt, in a similar manner one dhatu gets transformed to other. The Kedar Kulyai law states that as a farm gets irrigated by various channels one by one, with the closest being nourished first, similarly each dhatu gets nutrition in sequence with rasa first and shukra last. The Kala Kaput law states that as various pigeons make their way to a pot filled with grains, similarly the digestive juice nourishes each dhatu as required without any sequence. Though all these three laws may seem different, Ayurveda states that they are utilized according to the requirement. I hope this video was informative and made the subject clear. Comments and feedback are highly appreciated and you can leave them by visiting the National Library's website at www.nlam.in or likewise by writing to me at vdsumit at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.